from around the globe, it's theCUBE. Covering Upgrade 2020, the NTT Research Summit. Presented by NTT Research. Welcome back, I'm Stu Miniman and this is theCUBE's coverage of Upgrade 2020. Of course, it's NTT's Global Research Summit. Really excited we're going to be able to dig into uh, healthcare, the health system, of course, something that's been uh, you know, top of mind for everyone around the globe this year. So happy to welcome to the program. First time guest, Mary Edwards. She is the president of Provider at NTT Data Services. Mary, welcome to the program. Thanks so much for joining us. Hi, Stu. Glad to be here. All right, so wh why don't we start? As I, as I teed it up, uh, we're going to be talking about healthcare there. Just a little bit of your background, your group uh, inside of uh, NTT Data Services. Sure. So. Uh... I've been at NTT Data Services for a year, uh, just about a year on the nose. Really glad to be here. I've been in healthcare all of my career, over 30 years. At uh, first in the blues in underwriting, actuarial, and strategy. Uh, then uh, hopped to consulting, was a partner with Accenture for 20, uh, well, yeah, I think 22 years I was at Accenture. And, um, and then uh, uh, was, leading a, the commercial uh, markets portion of a platform as a service company for a couple of years and then NTT called and I was really impressed with what I learned about NTT and delighted to join their um, the firm as the president of provider. Well, well Mary, you know, I, I've got you know a little bit of background in some of the health. I, I love. I go to innovation conferences, and they're like, you know, we have the opportunity to really transform markets, but it's so tough to make change. Well, <laughs> you've been there for a year, and the last year there's been a forcing function uh, to change. Uh, the advent of telehealth and telemedicine. Uh, I, I've I've done plenty of interviews, and, and heck, you know, me and my family have been to doctors uh, using those services, which. At the beginning of this year, I wouldn't have thought was possible. Some of these might be long-term uh, changes and impact on what's happening. But bring us inside, uh, you know, your, your, your customers. What, what are some of the pressing challenges they're facing? And you know, it, it's been a little bit of this. Uh, you know, there, there, there obviously are huge challenges, but there's also been an opportunity uh, to make some rapid changes. Great question. Well, first of all, there's no place I'd rather be uh, right now than serving the health systems across the U.S. and uh, certainly we have impact globally. It's a dynamic time, lots of change, and as you say, with change comes opportunity, but also it's a time of uh, deep fragility and a time when these clients really need help, you know, not just from NTT, but from a variety of partners. And I, I know I feel and my team feels that it's a, a privilege uh, to work in supporting them uh, you know, through this very difficult time. And when I say difficult time, I mean, think about it. Even before the pandemic, Chartist Research was talking about the fact that likely 25% of rural hospitals would fail. You know, fast forward only a couple of months from that research being published and across the industry, outpatient revenues are down 11% year over year. Inpatient revenue down, as well, labor expenses up by nearly 18%. And so, um, you know, there's a lot of pressures on, on the industry right now. And that's what I mean by a, just a very significant time to be in the industry and, and position to help. There's a huge recovery that needs to happen from what our clients have experienced. Um, first and foremost, top line, we've got to get the revenue you know, back into the hospitals, you know, the CARES Act funding doesn't last forever and certainly, you know, uh, brings with it some obligations. So bringing in that top line growth, um, virtual health, which you mentioned is a big part of that strategy. At the same time, they've got to deal with all the new uh, uh, delivery models or working models, work from anywhere is uh, something that, uh, all businesses have to face an incredibly uh, an incredible challenge for our health systems because, of course, it's not just about uh, how we do our individual work, but the interactions that they have to have in in conducting the work that they do. So, care from anywhere and work from anywhere are huge concerns of our health system clients 
now and you have to do that in industrialized ways because you don't know where you're working day to day you have to be able to you know have fast switching right because we're not in, in control of where we work uh cities and states are you know are telling us you know what we have to do on a day in day out basis um there is a yeah, huge cost oh go ahead sure yeah no i it just as you, as you say obviously healthcare is rightly so a heavily regulated industry so you know bring us inside a little bit what are you know, some of those opportunities some of those innovations that uh you know, providers are being able to take advantage and you know have we opened the the gates a little bit to help things move a little bit faster uh, here in 2020 due to necessity? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, um, virtual care. You mentioned that earlier uh, has exploded. There's a lot of dialogue right now in the industry about whether that's forever. Um, it will never go back to the low single digits that it was prior to the pandemic. I mean, prior to the pandemic. Uh, health systems were were happy if they could get to 10% overnight. Uh, virtual care went to you know 40%, 50% increase overnight, and just continued to grow. Um, CEOs across the industry prior to the pandemic were really focused on digital front door strategies, the ability to uh, enable consumers to uh, enter the healthcare system digitally and virtually. And so, you know, probably for the 18 months before the pandemic, most large system CEOs that, that I talked to were working on those strategies. They're doubling down on those strategies because the, the industry is reshaping about that around that digital future state. The cost pressures that we're seeing in uh, healthcare at the same time require that they think about new operating and delivery models. Certainly the industry will, will restructure based on what we've gone through and continue to experience. And that will mean certainly changes in um, uh, consolidation in the healthcare uh, industry, right? As certainly certain systems will, will fail, right? Can't support what's happening around the economics of the industry. Uh, but also within our delivery uh, and operations, uh, there will be, um, and we're already seeing a trend toward uh, more pervasive um, outsourcing, uh, moving offshore, moving, um, you know, uh, taking particularly back office functions, whether it's IT or business processes, and looking for the help that can, you know, drive down the cost structure better automate and innovate on those uh, processes and delivery models and accelerate their uh, journey to the digital future state of health. So Mary, help us understand uh, NTT data services and, and NTT broader. Uh, what are the solutions? How, how are you helping your customers with, with, with everything we've discussed here? Sure, well, you know, you can't enable those digital front door strategies unless uh, you do things like uh, get your applications to the cloud. Uh, you know, you've got to be able to uh, open up uh, your environment to trade, if I, you know, if I say it that way, right, to exchange uh, more broadly, even within your own ecosystem, you know, within your own walls, uh, the ability to uh, connect doctors with doctors that, you know, before the pandemic didn't have a need to, to connect in the same way. Uh, becomes important. So at NTT, we do everything from journey to the cloud, certainly the security that's so important to those journeys and also the digital future of healthcare. Uh, um, RPA, the uh, introduction of bots and AI to workflows and operations in order to reduce cost. Um, at, in, in my division in provider, we worked for uh, nearly the last year on something we call Nucleus for Healthcare, which is um, that digital front door enabled by a digital foundation and uh, which delivers through pre-selected uh, capabilities, scheduling through virtual care uh, visits to uh, care coordination and payment. 
all integrated you know, across a digital fabric in order to accelerate uh, the industry and certainly our health system partners uh, achievement of that digital front door vision and the, uh, a full digital future for healthcare. Yeah, I, I, I love, uh, you talk, talked about RPA, automation has been one of the top things we've been hearing uh, this year, uh, it, it, just a top sea level uh, priority. Uh, we love uh, coming to events like this, a lot of discussion of you know, research, looking a little bit forward down the road. Uh, what, what are some of the items here at Upgrade 2020 you want to make sure our audience uh, get a little peek into? Yeah, yeah, well, uh, you know, you talk about automation and, uh, you know, I said a moment ago about offshore, we kind of, we're thinking about no shore, right? So when you think about the uh, application of automation and advanced uh, analytics, AI into business processes, it's not about moving business processes to a lower cost geography. It's about automating and enabling through, you know, bots and whatnot, the ability to not have you know, hands touch it and really conserving um, your resources for the uh, more complex things that have to happen. Um, so I love that concept of, of no shoring and really using technology to um, uh, position humans for, for their best possible work, solving the harder problems, uh, you know, that we face as an industry. Um, I think about innovations in um, uh, patient monitoring and what we can take in terms of IoT from other industries. And for instance, at NTT, we've been doing uh, smart city with the city of Las Vegas for a couple of years now. And we've got lots of AI around uh, movement, heat, light, you know, um, the physical context of things. And you think about how you move that into healthcare and, you know, it's certainly about patient observation and uh, creating safe spaces where uh, doctors and nurses don't have to travel in and out of rooms when, you know, there's a high contagion rate. But it's also about using AI, not just to watch the room, but to allow AI to alert when there's something very significant happening. You know, um, what kind of movement in the bed? Um, you know, you know uh, what does that infer in terms of you know what's happening in in the patient's room and alerting on that basis versus a you know a visual monitor, if you will. There are other Great. innovations. Oh, go ahead, Stu. Oh no, I'm so sorry. I, I thought I thought you were set. Please, please finish. Well, I was just about to say there are other innovations that we're working on that are really about um, uh, patient well-being. Uh, patient companion. I think about the work we're doing at NTT Disruption around something called Jibo, which is a robotics and, uh, you know, very cool little guy who uh, we've had some experience using it in uh, um, children's hospitals, right? It becomes like a really a companion of sort. There are lots of applications for that kind of technology, especially in a pandemic time when most of our patients are isolated and craving some kind of you know, human interaction and, you know, these kinds of capabilities can be um, like, like that. They can be companions and they can uh, provide the kinds of social interaction that really lead to health and well-being. Well, so, so many important topics. Mary, thank you so much for joining us. Great to hear, you know, automation, uh, robotics, and, and the people uh, at the center, of course, of what we look at in healthcare. Great to talk to you. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Bye-bye. Stay tuned for more coverage from Upgrade 2020. I'm Stu Miniman, and thank you for watching theCUBE.